let me uh, get into a, a kind of an ice breaker question right so i know yep. there's possibly more people over here that have not paid for fonts than have yep. paid for fonts right so uh, it's almost a designer milestone to get a client to pay for a font so um, that but that first step towards making them pay is an important one so can you describe like your first experience of actually making a client shell out money for a font and how you convince them um yeah uh, so uh, i i actually haven't worked with like uh, you know uh, agency uh, like i i worked primarily with agencies in the past so uh, the clients that we had were kind of uh, large companies uh so they were typically not like you know uh, the smaller smaller size brands so there was one uh, that i worked on like years ago it was a project for i think uh, home center if i'm not mistaken um so they uh, you know the audience their audience is primarily uh, in india uh, but also in the uae like it's it's primarily a, a brand from the middle east so there we needed you know uh, something that had both latin characters and uh, arabic characters right uh, so I, i forget which is the exact family we ended up using but uh, that like i said that was something that simply we could not find you know uh, freely available you know a, a good family that had good weights good variations um, in both latin and arabic so you know paid fonts uh, were the only way to go there um, but i think i mean if you're just looking at uh, like uh, like the smaller clients or the smaller brands um i can kind of see like it, it is a bit difficult to kind of you know fit uh, something like fonts into the budget especially because um i think like uh, you know the likes of google fonts and others have really raised the bar also in terms of what you can get for free now so uh, like i remember looking at google fonts way back you know uh, comparing it with typekit uh, when i started using typekit right uh, and i was like i was literally uh, appalled by like the quality of typefaces on 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 google fonts uh but they've come a long way they have like so many excellent you know high quality typefaces like the one i've used in this deck is a free one from google fonts called inter uh so as you can see like it's it's really really an excellent typeface it has so many weights and stuff so yeah it is a challenge uh, i i i really can't you know say more than that uh, i think that's yeah. a, that's a good answer where uh, like a good um requirement where uh, like a f- free font just doesn't cut it and especially yeah. with multilingual where you want the the families to kind of look together i think that's a good constraint to kind of make that pitch for a paid font as well so uh, this is a good time to tell the audience that's listening that uh, use the chat box on uh, this window to post any questions um, uh, that you want to ask carl uh, if you're actually asking from uh, if you're on the zoom call right now you can just request that i unmute you and i see akshat i'm going to get to you right now so you i you can just uh, raise your hand and uh, unmute yourself and directly ask that question once i uh, once we kind of ordered it so akshat would you like to uh, ask your second question your first question all right all right perfect thank you carl uh, this was such a great presentation um so um I actually had two questions Hamza is that okay if I ask two questions Yeah go for it Okay cool. sure. so uh, Carl my first question was can you talk uh, a little bit about like uh, you know one on one about what vertical rhythm is and uh, yeah, yeah. so I mean I have seen uh, the difference vertical rhythm makes when you're using the right fonts and you do it right uh, the overall uh the readability of the page in- improves a lot and it looks a lot more cleaner so that's the first question and the second question i wanted to understand from you is uh using serif fonts in uh, web applications and like uh online systems because that's something that i've not seen a lot yep. so uh, uh, like on a e-commerce website for example so um, it, um, the fact that you talked about uh you know serif fonts are more authoritative they are more yes. fact oriented uh i completely agree with that but i've not really seen a lot of designers use that for web apps i've seen a lot of them uh, 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 a lot of designers use it for like content websites like journ- journalism journalistic yes. portals or like blogs or everything else but not really for web, web apps and e-commerce sites yeah so sure. um so uh, the first question about vertical rhythm um i think uh, it makes a big difference in terms of uh, readability for sure like you said 
uh, it's a question of uh, using, I think, your CSS wisely and uh, having like a, uh, like a good, so you start off with a good uh, body size. You, you decide what your body size will be, like whether that's 18 or 20, and then you, you decide what is your line height and then everything else is kind of like a, a factor or multiple of that, like whether it's your padding or whether it's your spacing between paragraphs, all of that stuff. Um, right. In fact, I also think, uh, I think Hamza is planning a session around something of this sort uh, mm -hmm. in the future. Yes. So yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, that's stuff, that's something we can, we can talk about, uh, you know, in detail later, or maybe Hamza, if you want to jump in. Um, but yes, it definitely makes a big difference, uh, you know, vertical, vertical rhythm and spacing. Uh, uh, there was this, you know, uh, attempt, I think in the, in the web design uh, community many years ago to actually nail this down, you know, very precisely, you know, actually with uh. grid lines and stuff. Uh, but what what I think we realized was with the onset of of the responsive web and you know uh, widths varying all over the place and images needing to resize, it wasn't really you know practical to have you know vertical rhythm nailed down on the web the way you have it in print. Like in print, it is it is very very important to have it. And if you look at like any well designed book, uh, you know you can actually see the difference. You know your consistent vertical rhythm makes. But I think because the web, uh, you know by virtue of it being a fluid medium, you know, accessible on, on devices of different sizes and display qualities. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, uh, is what I would say. Um, Perfect, yeah. Um, so you want to talk about the, you, uh, like yeah, about this I before think, I, think I, we, I get to the second thing? Sure, I think we are, we are definitely planning a session where we are looking at how once, uh, it's kind of like, this is a great segue, Carl's talk is a great segue to that session where once you select those typefaces, how do you kind of like size them? What is a system that you follow to kind of make them production level as well as like uh, use them uh, like uh, if you're not working, um, if you're not developing the thing yourself, how do you kind of hand that off to a developer as well? So we will be covering that in a future session for sure. And that's going to be, and Carl, thank you. This, this has laid a great ground for that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, and um, sorry. Uh, no, uh, I think Akshay had a second How do you question. Kind of hand that off to a developer as well. So we will be covering that in a future session for sure, and that's going. Some sort of echo, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I think Akshay had a second question, which uh, which I can maybe also answer uh, regarding uh, serif uh, faces, right? Uh, and why we don't see them a lot in um, web apps. Um, I think uh, the reason is, is also partly like I, I, I actually see them a lot in e-commerce sites, but uh, I think by web apps, you mean more, more like, you know, products like maybe Google Analytics or something, you know, really, uh, you know, like an analytics tool or uh, like a fintech tool or something maybe like that is, is I assume what you're asking. Um, I think the reason is that, uh, again, by virtue of, uh, of serifs, being the more historical of the two, like serifs are a lot older than sans serifs. Sans serifs came came around a lot later. Uh, so by that virtue itself, you know, most of the great typefaces, you know, historically speaking, have always been serifs. So they have this air of authority and you know this link to the past and this this formalness about them, which make them like a better uh, a fit for something like a New York Times or a news site or any even an e-commerce site. Like if you're a brand, you know, you're, you're a brand trying to establish trust with your users, right? Or trust with your, with your customer base. Then yes, like definitely, you know, go for something, uh, you know, with a serif, with a serif, from a serif family. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I would say. Uh, I'm going to ask one, um, like uh, one question before jumping again to an audience question, which is, uh, I think uh, unlike like what you had mentioned earlier, which is the history of type is not kind of important or we're going to brush, rush through that. I think it's wonderful that you covered it for a couple of reasons, because when, uh, first of all, it was very reminiscent of my graphic designer days where we used to speak about lino cut and things like that that were physical artifacts to yeah. print uh, typefaces, right? But for web, I think this context is really important because it's kind of gearing everything towards the fact that we want to make more performant uh, and more performant and accessible like interfaces. Like so, I think that the fact that we 
covered that is a great thing for this uh, for this exercise so is that a lived history for you like you mentioned something about like having experienced that so is that a lived ex uh, history for you and how does that kind of like uh, help you today um yeah so if i yeah i had to breeze through that because of uh, you know time constraints but maybe i can just go back to yeah all this stuff uh like a lot of these things i actually have have done before uh not image replacement uh, so this was i think this used to happen like 2010 or maybe even earlier um but definitely i have done uh flash uh this happened i think this started happening just as i was entering into you know web design just as i was starting out um uh, so kufon as well uh i actually remember i think it was font squirrel if i'm not mistaken font squirrel is to actually allow you to upload any any you know desktop yeah. uh you know face and they would give you like this uh font map out of it and uh yeah. and and then you know i remember using all of that stuff um so i think yeah in terms of just experiencing all of this i think it it like personally for me uh it gives me a better appreciation of the journey that we've had um and just a better appreciation of where we where we arrived at you know in terms of as an industry that today you know we can just use uh you know font face we can just link you know to something like a google fonts uh, and it just works and uh, you know with with all the steps that i think the w3c is taking right uh, you know with the uh, there's also i think a css module now called fonts the css has its own fonts module if i'm not mistaken uh, so they're taking like uh, you know typography very seriously so the future also you know looks looks very bright Yeah, if you can go to your web safe font slide, uh, just back a few. Uh, I think what's very interesting because we are moving to more performant interfaces as well. What's very interesting is that these web safe fonts or OS safe fonts are kind of making a comeback because of how performant they also are. Like where uh, you're kind of like looking using a sans serif declar font declaration just so that it. And this is mostly like a trend that we're seeing more, more and more in apps and not so much in content websites where. they just declaring a source serif so that the, uh, the entire app looks like it's part of your os and so yeah. that the native feel of it looks more like that so it's really nice that while we started with this it's kind of making going a full circle and maybe making a interesting comeback at least in that app space so uh, pratik uh, you have a question would you like to uh, just stay, uh, unmute yourself and take it hey pratik hi carl hi hamza Hi. Uh, uh, great talk, Carl. Uh, enjoyed it a lot. Uh, and yeah, I have uh, two questions. Uh, sure. So uh, you started off with uh, Oliver's article about ninety-five percent of uh, web design being typography, and sure. um, uh, then we uh, we went through a, a, a lot of uh, um, uh, th slides about selecting the right typeface and the variations possible. Uh, so I wanted to get your thoughts on. Um, how much of typography uh, web typography uh, do you think is about uh, getting the typeface right and how much of it is uh, other aspects like um, uh, akshat mentioned vertical rhythm uh, with things like you know the the legibility of the font sizes the the measure uh, the colors contrast and so forth uh, and uh, the second question was on uh, formants so one of the uh, legacy methods for um, using typefaces which was the flash uh, flash method cipher uh, you you pointed out that you know it would often cause performance issues and uh, in the current method of using uh, fonts on the web uh, do we still run into performance issues uh, uh, do you have any uh, thoughts about that or like tips for avoiding performance issues sure sure um yeah so with respect to the first question um i think uh, with respect to typography on the web you can look at it at two levels uh, you have something called macro typography and something called micro typography so the macro typography refers to what you started off with which is selecting typefaces uh, you know body typefaces display typefaces you know I, i would also argue like you know at least like having a line height and you know vertical rhythm uh but then you have also the other side of it which is micro typography which is the other small things like um uh, like you know using m dashes you know the, the small things that make a difference like that 
so i think i think it's like a, an even split i think you know so you have to pay attention to the larger larger issues of uh you know what typeface am i using does this resonate with the content that i am i using it for right is it a good fit for the brand uh you know balancing all that on the one hand with also uh you know making sure that you nail down you know your like if there is a character like if you're writing like something in french you know and there's something with a cedula actually using a cedula you know using a typeface that has you know those uh, that, those characters you know or those or those uh, ornaments so that's all like micro typo typography that i was talking about so i think it's it's like it's a balancing act between between both um uh, and uh yeah the second one about performance um yeah i think with cipher it was it, it had a big effect on performance um uh, but even with web fonts today i think there is scope for abuse if you 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 can't really you know just go wild with web fonts uh i mean typically depending on how many characters you have and what character set you're using and how many weights you select uh i think on an average a font kit could come up to like something like maybe 200 kb uh, you know at least from my experience uh, you know but but if you abuse it you can even take it up to like you know 900 800 kb right which is, which then becomes a problem because then obviously these fonts need to be you know downloaded before they are rendered and then you have you know like we used to have this thing of uh, flash of unstyled text and flash of invisible text and all that kind of stuff so i think uh, you know from a, i think that's another technical consideration which maybe i i also omitted uh, keep performance in mind and just use a subset of only the characters that you need so if you're if you're looking at a, like an english kind of website choose only the latin character set don't go for extended characters you know uh, and uh use only the weights that you need and the styles that you need you know stick to only that and and really kind of uh, keep the font kit as light as possible that's awesome man and uh i think uh, this kind of segues into my next question also uh where you said that like let's keep it performant let's have multiple weights and multiple styles and this still keep it performant so limit that choice uh, considerably so what are your thoughts on uh, variable fonts which is now like the new uh, the future of typography and maybe you could also like uh, explain that for people who are not aware of it yeah sure um yeah so right at the outset i i just want to say that i don't have experience with variable fonts i haven't actually you know tested them out myself uh but uh, they are kind of yeah they kind of fall somewhere in 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 maybe in this slide uh, so variable fonts the technology itself is uh, an update on the open type specification so it's actually like an upgrade on the open type specification so what this allows is uh, so typically now you have uh, like let's say uh, inter right so you would have inter regular you would have suppose you want inter regular you want inter semi bold inter bold right that's three different fonts right so if you if you go and uh, use a, a service or you you take the font itself those are three different like either otf files or ttf files right with variable fonts what you have is all three different weights or all three different variants compressed into a single file right uh, and it's almost like a matrix uh, you know that that uh, that you can send to your browser in a single font file so the user can can select not just regular semi bold and bold but he can actually select like a whole different like range of weights like so if if bold was 400 and semi bold is 600 and and uh, sorry regular is 400 semi bold is 600 and bold is 800 you could even do like, like something like 750 or 650 right because uh, i mean the mathematics of the vectors are included in that font file so that basically an, uh, enables the browser to display any range of weights any uh, display any range of uh, you know even widths like you you can you can combine like a condensed you know width with a regular width and an ultra wide width in the same font file and just you know have the browser use that so in and terms you, of yeah go ahead sorry do you see yourself using that a lot more in the future personally yeah 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 uh, yeah as soon as i get some time to kind of you know uh, set up a playground and you know try try something out for sure yeah um yeah <laughs> uh, it, it's it's definitely something that i think uh, a, few, a, a couple of good sites have already started using it uh yeah i think when i did my research about it like few years ago 
I think maybe like the browser compatibility, um, you know, may have been an issue. I don't know how many browsers supported it like two, three years back, but now I think support is a lot better. Uh, and it also ties in with the whole, you know, uh, WAR format. Uh, and uh, since, you know, since uh, most browsers, like you can see, like, you know, Chrome 5 and Safari 5, like it's quite good in terms of support. So I think today most browsers that support the WAR format also support variable fonts. And, and one thing to um, the listeners as well that uh, there is in the Google fonts, um, in the Google fonts like a website, you also, most of the fonts are kind of becoming variable now. So yeah. you can actually select that filter saying, show me variable fonts, and it actually gives you that. So that's, a, that's possibly a good place to kind of start exploring. And yeah. uh, I'm going there's, to there's also uh, Roboto, I think. Roboto Flex is, is something on, on Google Fonts, which is already available. So if anyone wants to try it out, you can actually go to Google Fonts and look for Roboto Flex, if I'm not mistaken. It's an actual variable font. Yeah. Variable font, okay. Uh, Ru had a question. And Ru, would you like to uh, ask it yourself? Uh, there is, um, it just says Ru here. Okay, so let me ask it because uh, they have mentioned it here. They say, how do you say a certain font has enough glyphs? Okay. Um, so if you if you go to the actual type foundry, uh, they will always like mention uh, like what is the included uh, glyphs. So uh, if you go to, for example, Google fonts, I think, uh, and you select uh, like uh, like a Cyrillic typeface or something with Devanagari, uh, right? You you would see like if you go to the actual font detail page, somewhere on the page you will always like look at the they will actually show you every single character and glyph that the font includes. So if it's just a Latin face, all you will see is just capital A uh, to capital Z, small A to small Z, numerals and you know, the usual punctuation. But if you have something like a uh, like a font family that supports multiple languages. Then you will see like A to Z, small A to small Z, but you will also see all the other characters like Adevnagri, Kirkogo, all of that stuff. So just I say just go to either the service, uh, you know, the detail, the font detail page on the service or on the Foundry side, and you you'd get a sense of what glyphs are included. Okay, and and uh, she had a follow up, which is uh, what steps could she take to just make sure that the the font works for the use case? So if you can give an example of say a use case a use case of New York Times, maybe, and then think of like what are you looking for that glyph set when we are looking. Oh, I love uh, that uh, read the label slide, by the way. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, so with the New York Times, uh, I'm assuming like uh, that most of their audience is, is either US-based or uh, most of their audience is English-speaking. Uh, so for me here, it would be a question of, uh, you know, balancing uh, performance with, uh, you know, the, the, the glyphs and the characters that I need. So here, I think, I mean, uh, if I understand the question correctly, I think here you could probably get away with just a Latin or a Latin extended character set. You wouldn't need, you know, glyphs, uh, uh, like any other glyphs in that. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if I understood the question correctly. Uh, Is that I, what she was asking? Yeah, no, she said thank you. So yeah, I think you uh, answered it perfectly. Yeah, but uh, that's an interesting font, uh, that uh, interesting font name, interesting point that you uh, raised, which is uh, the point about multilingual, right? So New York Times, you said it's mostly Latin, but um, can you tell us, like, say, for example, in India, we're doing a website which has, which is a Latin based thing, but the client or uh, the requirement from the website is that we need it in Hindi as well. So what are some of those steps where you've identified this and then after, as an afterthought, you need to kind of include this new language, right? What are some of the steps that you can do to your, um, to your, like to your files and your layout so that when you switch those typefaces, it kind of works? Um, yeah, I, I, I would say that uh, select, uh, so you, ha you already have like a Latin face. Uh, or a Latin family. So if you're now, if you're looking for like a Devanagari family to add to that, uh, I would say uh, try to match it, uh, you know, as closely to your Latin face in terms of like, you know, what is the size of the ascenders and descenders, you know, mm -hmm. the overall size of the, of the, of the, of the Devanagari face, try to match it as close as possible. So look at the Devanagari face, which, you know, side by side with your Latin face, 
the heights more or less match the thickness of the you know strokes of the characters more or less match right uh, and the overall metrics are the same so i mean if you look at different fonts uh, a 1.5 line height on font a might be different from a 1.5 line height on a font b mm-hmm. right? even though the, the line height is the same because of the way the you know the typeface designer designs the metrics of the font one might be roomier than the other or one might be more you know compressed than the other mm-hmm. uh, so ideally you know you should use a like i would just use a like a, a super family for something like that so a family that has both but if you've not kind of uh, you know not maybe done that research or it, it was an oversight then just try to match it as closely as possible uh, this uh, i think you mentioned something about home center and using an arabic uh, typeface for that and arabic is typically right to left, uh, right, to left. Thing, right? Yes. so uh, how do you kind of manage that when you uh, when you're creating a layout and you need to find the typeface that works both from left to right in latin and right to left in arabic like how did you navigate that problem um yeah so that i think was a kind of a, a close collaboration between uh, like me the designer and also the content person like the, the person who writes the copy uh, and it's 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 a uh, it's down to having a discussion about uh, the same copy or the same heading right uh, what is it in arabic uh, can be like if the if the the english heading is like eight words like uh, in arabic is it longer than that is it shorter than that uh, and if there's a is the big difference between the two uh, if it's like down to like the english heading fitting on one line but the arabic one needing two lines then i i would say like it's a discussion you need to have with your with a copy person maybe maybe can we reduce that uh, or just designing you know your your header to be flexible to account for both a single line heading or a multi line heading yeah um uh, and just to remind everyone that uh, we have uh, 10 minutes uh, t- 10 odd minutes left on our site on on our uh, webinar right now so please put your questions in the chat box i must say that there's a lot of conversation about variable fonts happening in our chat box as well as some twitter love for this presentation <laughs> that has been shared kindly by zena for you call so let me go into my next uh, question which is um, when um when you when you present something and i'm guessing that if you're not creating a website for yourself the fact that you've chosen a certain display typeface and a certain paragraph typeface is is still subjective right like because you're kind of um creating it based on certain design principles that you have but when you when you pitch it to someone else how do you make the case for the fact that this is the typefaces you need to go for and when there is resistance on that end where you know there is no this doesn't work come back like what is your usual process of like uh, pitching a typeface to the person who needs to adopt it and how do you deal with their feedback it it's it, it begins with like a like a formal discovery process okay. uh, in which like uh, you know you ask uh, the the brand or the customer like essentially what what is the brand like what does it communicate uh, you know what does it stand for uh, you know what is the general personality of the brand and not just typography but everything you know should uh, kind of mirror that or align with that uh, right so if you have like a brand like uh, something like maybe yeah like the new york times is a good example on one side but you have something like maybe uh airbnb or something very modern right on the other side so the characteristics the general characteristics uh, of the brand differ a lot if you have something like you know nike mm-hmm. right versus something like harley davidson so harley davidson like it stands for a whole set of values like freedom and the open road right and nike is about victory you know and 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 perseverance and all those kind of attributes so uh, trying to kind of align not just you know typography but even other things so i i would say that um do your research uh, you know do a, do a formal discovery figure out you know ask questions if required um, you know definitely ask questions uh, but i mean figure out what the brand stands for and then you know apply that in terms of uh, you know typeface selection uh, two books i can highly recommend you know if if anyone is interested in not just web typography but typography in general uh, one is the elements of typographic style by robert bringhurst i have both of them on my bookshelf uh i think that's the most important book on typography you can read 
and uh, a primer for you know someone just getting started would be thinking with type by ellen lupton so i think these two uh, you know if you're really interested in you know aligning typography with an existing brand uh, i can highly recommend both these books that's awesome and uh, uh, what i was just going to ask you what are the, some of those resources so that's good that you covered that i i found one particular thing super useful uh, which is a nuances to consider right where you spoke about and i think that comes through the like it breaks down the subjectivity a lot if you can go into the nuances where you had the black lives matter slide um i found that really interesting because sometimes you want to you it is very heavily based on like a philosophy or you want to have a hidden story where like the person who is kind of owning the site which is a client also kind of jumps at it saying yes like you know because sometimes it does not have to do with how it looks and stuff is is it the right choice is is the question right so what are some of the have you had any experience of doing this activity where you discovered that uh, you went the nuanced way and what is like an example of that um no honestly there's like like there's no example i personally you know implemented this with this is just something that i have kind of uh, you know read and researched about uh, i think it was robert bringhurst in the book itself he says that uh, you know a, a typography should resonate with the audience yeah. uh, so i mean it's just one of those things that uh, that, that that literally very few people could probably even you know notice like for me like to actually find this out you'd have to actually go to you know either the style sheet or do an inspect element on their site uh, i mean to most people like you know people who are not like you know typography you know typographically inclined uh, it oh yeah it's just another sans serif they used or it's just another uh, you know display face is used but uh, i mean to the one to the people who actually you know dig a little deeper and find out that the face they have used is actually you know designed by a by a black studio or by a black typeface designer i think that makes uh, the whole thing make a lot more sense also yeah and uh, do you feel um, that i i think sovik has a question i'm going to get to that um there is um, do you feel this is a controversial question and a subject but i saw a lot of code in the earlier part of your website of your presentation right so uh, do you feel designers need, how much of css or do you feel it's necessary at all that designers who have no exposure to development know this know anything about code to do good typography oh it's a very it's a very controversial topic <laughs> and uh, i don't know whether i want to you know dip my feet in, in into that into that uh, river but uh, i i can just say like from my personal experience it it is it has been an uh, an immense help uh, that i that i know html you know no one saying you need to know like react and stuff like that right but uh, knowing the basics of html like semantic good semantic html uh, knowing the you know what elements to use knowing css you know at least how to apply basic declarations uh, and 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 just you know being able to do a very basic kind of design in the browser right so you you have your design in your in your render tool in your photoshop or your sketch or figma uh, and maybe just you know just just knowing enough to at least render something on a page and and just test it out in a browser is i think what makes a big difference to me so i i won't say whether you should code or you know you need to know how to code i can just say that it, it has helped me a lot and i think hamza you as well right uh, it, it's been a big help knowing css and html yeah for sure and i i would encourage actually quite a few people to just look at only your font declaration css uh, things for because it's just nice to know how line height gets uh, described on the web and it's almost it's almost very similar to any design software like sketch or figma that you might be using so i think yeah. just any of those css properties that start with the word font or type would be a good thing to just be aware of so that because even variable fonts is moving to using these properties while declaring fonts as well so i have uh, there's a uh, there's a fun question question from sovik and i want to add to that question also his question is do you miss type kit and if yes how are you coping with it that's his question and my question is thanks for demystifying or comment is thanks for demystifying how adobe pricing works because ever since adobe font has come i don't understand how a subscription is going to, is supposed to be 
like god do i have to pay for one of these apps and i yeah. think uh, yeah like it just i don't need the app i need the phone so i don't yes. understand how this subscription model works so thanks for covering that and i'm going to go back and look at it but i want you to answer sovik's question which is do you miss typekit typekit and how are you coping yeah i i really really miss typekit uh, so a little bit of history like uh, i think i i i became a customer of typekit very very early on like i think 2000 maybe 15 or something uh, or maybe or even earlier but uh, like i uh, like basically they started off i remember with uh, i think 36 dollars a year was where they started off and then they made it 48 like a few years later and then the whole you know adobe acquisition came and stuff but yeah i i really really miss like the og type kit which was you know an independent small independent company and they had jason santa maria as creative director and all these you know uh, people that we like to you know follow on twitter and read about so i really really uh, you know miss them um so what i am currently doing with adobe fonts is uh, i actually have a subscription to i think adobe in copy uh, you know like like hansa you were saying so that's one of the that's the cheapest app that they have in their catalog yeah so i think uh like i said in that last slide it comes to for me it comes to around uh yeah it's it's almost like 4800 a year uh if you use adobe in copy so I, that's the, i'm i'm just a creative suite you know creative cloud user only for only for the fonts so i'm just like using adobe in copy so it's like 300 a month or something 4000 something a year okay, okay. but I, i i really really miss that the old type kit yeah <laughs> i think so that answers uh, this question as well so um i think uh, you've already pointed out the resources about the technical uh, things like the two books that you recommended uh, maybe we'll tweet that out also just as a as the primer but uh, i wanted to also know are there any good web resources that we can kind of um, point people out to where it might be helpful to kind of like read or or look look up your website on the uh, look up your fonts on these websites and things like that uh, off the top of my head no uh, i think there is one called a practical guide to web typography it's like a micro site i don't know the exact url or you know off hand Uh, but I think if you just Google a practical guide to web typography, I think you can get the Got get the website. Got it. I uh, think, yeah, cool. I I think it also like has there are many sites also like Type in News and this yeah, uh, Type in News, Typewolf and things like that where uh, yeah. these are not directly like resources, but they're also they're helpful to. uh just see if your font that you're considering for a project is being used in a website yes. because it gives a better feel of it so yeah uh, typeful yeah. fair typeful is excellent uh, if you're looking for just like you know uh, web font inspiration typeful is excellent uh, highly recommend that uh yeah there's also another one i think called elements of typographic style apply to the web okay uh, so someone has basically taken the book that i was talking about uh, and actually like you know uh, applied it to like the web context so all the stuff that the book talks about in terms of print the you know the the author has applied it to the web so that's another one you can also google